I want to welcome back our viewers to Conversations with John. In this episode, we're going to talk to a UCC pastor, chaplain, and a good friend of mine, Jess Chancy. Jess, why don't you introduce yourself? You just did a fine job. I'm <laughs> Jess Chancy. I'm a chaplain in the Twin Cities area of Minnesota. One of the reasons I wanted to do this interview with you, there, there are two reasons. Um, one is that you are a chaplain. And in all of the conversations I'm having with key leaders across the denomination, they have all said to me how grateful they are in this season and through this pandemic for the chaplains, because we have local church pastors who cannot get out to visit their patients. And chaplains are calling the local church pastors and saying, use me, I'm here. Yeah. Um, and so I want to hear your reflections on that. The other is, and for our viewers, I, I want them to know this, you're not feeling well. And that is a direct result of the work that you're doing in the hospitals. And I, I want our viewers to hear your perspective on that. Um, so talk a little bit about what it's been like to be a chaplain through this season of the COVID virus. Okay. Um well, yeah, as, as you said, I'm a hospital chaplain, and so I'll talk a little bit about my work by Junior to make it clear that this is my talking. I'm not in any way representing the hospital where I work. Um, but yeah, I, I am feeling under the weather. It is those symptoms. I've been tested. Um, the results are not in yet. We're saving the really fast results for the inpatients. And um, so that's something that, that I think there's a lot of misunderstanding around right now is why we're choosing who we are choosing to be tested and why some people are getting um, the personal protective equipment like the masks and everything and others aren't. That's something that's been very particular to chaplains in the hospital. And it's because there really is a shortage. And I'm sorry, I, I don't know if you can hear my text messages coming through. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like we as, as chaplains in the hospital are being viewed as absolutely essential by, um, by the hospital staffs. We are essential in that we're there to provide care for these patients. Uh, in many places, they're not getting any visitors from the outside. We've had to really cut back on who's allowed in. And so they're very, very, very lonely. So we're also checking in on the families because since they can't be there with their loved ones, um, trying to facilitate that communication back and forth, being that bridge um, is a large part of what uh, what I'm doing right now. And I think what many of us are doing right now, but we're also helping out with the staff there. Um, because it is such a very scary time for people who are going out there, facing exposure every day to try to provide care for, for these people who are suffering. And as you can hear, we ourselves are suffering. Um, and so, you know, I know that if I were an inpatient in an ICU, I would get a turnaround on my test like within 24 hours. If I were a nurse caring for that patient, I would have access to the glove, the face mask, the gown. Um, but since I'm not having to be there in the room with them right now, I don't really need that protective gear, gear from them. And so I would rather it be saved for a doctor or nurse who has to be in the room with them right then. I can do my work on the telephone. As to why it's taking three to five days for me to get my test results back, nobody's having to use PPE to come visit me. So it, it doesn't matter right now. I know that probably sounds really weird for me to say it doesn't matter whether or not I actually positively have it, but I'm not using any resources right now that I wouldn't be otherwise. So I'm gonna ask this next question um, and I want you to answer from your perspective as, a, perspective as a chaplain. And then I'm gonna ask a similar question and I want you to ask it as just chancy, right? Okay, so I feel like I've been rambling so much already, okay. You're, you're doing fine. Here's the first question, <clears throat> you are, you are now a patient. Um, if this proves to be the case that you have contracted the virus, from the perspective of a chaplain, 
doing her work in what is a risky environment. What, what are your reflections on that? Um, it's what I signed up for, you know? I, love you. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I'm going to call out my mother. I know that she, she doesn't like it when I call her out, but one of the things that she has always expressed when I've talked about my call to chaplaincy and the areas that I've lived in, the fact that I like living in urban environments and serving people in need, she worries that I'm putting myself in danger. And I say, I'm putting myself where God called me. Yeah. If people, if nobody wanted to go to these hard places and serve, then the places would be harder. So part of the calling of chaplaincy work is not to be comfortable. It's not to be 100% completely safe all the time. It's to go out there and, and serve where the need is. So and, for anybody listening to this, if you wonder why I am so proud of and love the clergy of the United Church of Christ as much as I do, that answer right there will tell you why. Um, I'm just so proud of you, Jess, and I'm just so proud of all of our chaplains in these days who are literally putting their health at risk to do what they were called to do. Um, and this is what it means to be a pastor. You, and that's not to say, of course, that we don't wish that we had all those extra protections. And there are, of course, I can only speak from my perspective. So there, there are many chaplains who are like, no, I need the, the masks and everything. There are many people who serve in this capacity who do have those underlying risk factors. I don't, so I'm willing to sacrifice more. When I talk about my pride in that, it's, it's not that I'm, I'm proud of you that you're willing to go into that room without protection. It's, it's that you are willing to do what, the, what ministry calls you to do, uh, whatever the circumstances are. And, and this is what it is meant to be a pastor for as long as the Holy Spirit has been calling folk like you into this ministry. So, so now I'm going to ask this in a more personal way. Okay. Um, uh, I've come to care a great deal about you. Thanks, How are you experiencing this? It's early on. You're not yet a confirmed case of the COVID, but it's, it's likely that you might be. What's the experience like for you sitting in an apartment by yourself with your 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 wonderful companion Macy? Can everybody see Macy? Yeah. Macy. How are you doing? What what is this experience like for you at this point? Well, I'm really not supposed to be close to Macy. Part of the isolation protocols was to keep a distance from pets, but yeah. that's not really an option for me <laughs> because yeah. I do live alone. And I think for me personally, that's been the hardest thing is um, not having any other human beings in the house to check in on me who are already exposed and could give me a hug. Oh my Took gosh, i as Tuck huggy as I am right now. Yeah. What was that, John? I said, cook you a meal, tuck you into bed, get you an extra blanket, get your medicine. Yeah. Yeah, I, I am very blessed in that I have made some good friends here. I'm not a solo chaplain. I'm part of a team and they've all been checking in on me. Um, one of my colleagues, actually, that might have been her that was calling me earlier. She brought me Flonase when I thought it was just allergies. Yeah. She's bringing me some milk now and she's right. just setting these things outside my door saying it's there. And I live in an apartment complex where... The property manager said, hey, you got a package. I just set it outside your door. They walk away. I get it. So, so personally, my, my experience of this has been very lonely. I, I won't lie about that. Um, and there is a large amount of anxiety and fear that goes with being alone and sick. Yeah. I'll just put it out there. Um, I try to laugh it off like jokes with jokes. Like if anything happened, Macy would get really fat off of all of this. <laughs> but I mean, it, it's, it's, a, it's a bit of laughing to keep from crying because yeah, the, the loneliness is real and I'm an introvert. So when I say that, you know, it's pretty bad. Right, right. Um, but I think my biggest thing, like I know that I'm going to be fine through this physically. I know that I have all of the, pardon, 
<laughs> I know that I have all of the mental tools to cope. Um, as hard as it gets, I know that I will survive this. My bigger worry is having exposed others. And that's been the, the, the reason why I haven't gone into rooms without protective gear. I am, you know, of course, abiding by the don't go in the rooms or in cases of dire emergency, do use the gear. Um, not to protect myself as much as it is just to make sure that I don't catch it and then give it to somebody who might not survive it. Yeah. Uh, hearing the combination of the extremes of anxiety with the massive hysteria and being like, okay, let, let's, let's calm down. But also the more realistic anxieties, the number of people we expect to die from this. It's, it, it is a very scary place to be in right now. Yeah. Well, Jess, I just want to thank you. You've, you've taken uh, time out of your healing. <laughs> I thought you were going to say my busy day. <laughs> no, no. <coughs> I'm glad to know that your wit and humor are not absent you in a time such as this. Um, I'm sure all of those watching this will join me in lifting you up in prayer, giving thanks to you for your ministry, and more broadly giving thanks for all who have received the call to serve as chaplains in any time. It, it is a, a noble profession that reaches the lives of very vulnerable people every day, um, but especially in this time. So for all of that, know that you're in our thoughts and prayers, and thank you. Oh, thank you, John. I mean, it takes a whole heck of a lot of a beautiful spirit. I think I, I said yesterday when we were talking that you have a gorgeous soul. Um, it, it takes an amazing soul like right hat for my soul to wear. Yes, I'm going to have to invent soul hats. Um, but you know, it, ta it takes a particularly extraordinary person to be able to follow the spirit no matter where that spirit goes, even in times like this. Well, the Spirit so. has led me to this conversation today. Thank you. And to our listeners, this has been Conversations with John, my guest today, the Reverend Jess Chancy. Stay tuned for another conversation and Macy. And thank you for tuning in. Thank you.